Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is exactly one o'clock and let's get going. I was involved with this initiative last year, and it's just such a pleasure for me to be involved in an initiative like this, which really looks at raising awareness. Now, I'm a leadership specialist. A lot of people were asking, what am I doing with an investment or a financial uh, awareness campaign? Well, one of the best things that we have to be aware of from leadership side is our self-awareness. And when we talk about investments, you need to be aware of where you are before you start investing in other things and money and before you become aware of money. So I'm going to take you through the journey of what I call self-investment. And really it starts with investing in you. But let's start with a story. I want you to imagine is this massive forest and there's a group of people who are standing by as two individuals are walking into the forest. Now the contest is between these two individuals. One is an older gentleman and the other one is a much younger one. They've got their tools. And the rules of the contest are simple. Chop down as many trees as possible and you've got all day to do it. This is very early in the morning and they went out and the crowd were very excited watching this, listening to this chopping in the background. And from the one side, especially the young side, there was a lot of frenetic chopping going on. And they, everyone said, this guy is just chopping trees down and he, he's going to win. On the other side, there was a lot of chopping and it was quiet. And then there was some chopping again, and then it was quiet again. And then every now and again, some more chopping. So this went on for the whole day. As the sun was beginning to set, the two weary people walked out of the forest, and the judges went in to go and see how much they chopped. Who do you think won this contest? Remember, we're sitting with two people. A younger gentleman who went in, he was chopping frenetically. There was always a sound coming from his environment. You could hear his axe hitting the trees, and there was a lot of sound as he was going on. And then there was an older person. Now, the assumption was that this person was just so tired after chopping, because you can see there's a big age gap between these two. Who do you think won? It also depends, I suppose, on the, the equipment that you have. So let's have a look at the young man. What did he have? Well, he had a, his solid axe that he'd been using for many years. He always carried it around with him. He had it ready. He was a lumberjack of note, and he was always known as someone who was really competent in what he did. The older man had wisdom on his side, and there's his tool. Now, I'm not too sure whether you notice something different between these two. So there's the equipment again, the younger man on the left, and the older man's on the right. So who won? What do you say? Perhaps you can pop it into the chat if you want. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the older man won. Now, a lot of people look at this and say, but how on earth did he win? Here's someone that's at least 30 years older than the young person, but he was able to be more successful. Judges came back and said, he, he chopped a number of more, a number of logs more than the other person. So there were a lot of trees chopped down. Not many more, but there were definitely more. What did he do differently? Well, if you look at those two axes, which one would you want to use? The one on the left, we see it, the, 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 the edge looks a little bit blunt, or do you want to use the one on the right hand side? What was the old man doing that the young man was not? Let's have a look at the differences and why the old man won this competition. Well, first of all, he took a break. When he got tired, he took a break. The young man said, I've got to win this competition and carried on chopping no matter what. He was exhausted. In fact, they were both exhausted at the end of the day. But the look on the young person's face was even more exhausted. But he had a level of pride in himself because I said, I have chopped down more than the older person. The older person was more prepared. He took a oiled stone with him so that he could sharpen his axe. So in the quiet times, when the crowd were wondering whether the old man had fallen asleep or he was taking a break, he was sharpening his axe. 
He applied the wisdom that he had. The 30-year jump that he had on this other person had enabled him to do things a little bit better. He decided to invest his time in himself and especially decided to work smarter, not harder. Now, Money Smart Week is a time where you'll hear a lot of presentations around where you should invest money, how you should budget, where you should be putting your finances. But what happens if you don't? And that's why I say a lot of the decisions we make need to be based on how we approach life. And that's where we can learn a lot from the older gentleman. So let's just look at the definition or what invest and investment actually means. It's a verb or what we call a doing word. And it could mean to buy and perhaps you want to buy property. Perhaps you want to buy shares in a company. That's a wonderful way to grow your, your wealth over time. Invest in the stock exchange because they're successful companies grow and you're able to get a return on your money. So what you put in, you're eventually going to get out with some additional investment as there are dividends that come out and there's interest and all sorts of things as the company appreciates. But this is all done in the hope of making a profit. Now, I'm sure what you also hear in the next few days or you've already heard is that there's never a guarantee with finances. What we know in the long term, there's definitely a return on it. And that's why I want to almost encourage you to think about yourself first before you start thinking about money. But ideally, we invest in something. We invest in property. We invest, as we said, in shares. Or what I'm suggesting is yourself. So here's the use of the word. Now's a good time to invest in the property market. I think you can understand what invest means there. Here's another one. He invested his life savings in his daughter's business. These are both examples of investments. Now, I'm not too sure whether you know this person. This is Warren Buffett, well-known investor. He's been investing for many years. A lot of people have looked at him and, and think that he's the guru of Omaha. His company is based there, and he has just seen immense growth in his organization. However, one of the things that he says is, by far the best investment you can make is in yourself. So yes, we can invest money in shares, we can invest money in property, or maybe you want to invest money in your own business. But by far, according to Warren Buffett, who, depending on uh, um, people like Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos or Bill Gates, these are the guys that are the richest people in the world. And he says, by far the best investment you can make is to invest in yourself. He says, make the most of your investment. Never stop acquiring knowledge, the kind of knowledge that betters yourself as a whole person, not just as an investor. And if you listen to his talks uh, in Omaha when he's talking about his company, and he, he talks a lot of sense around what's happening in the market, and he never invests in something he doesn't understand. So, yes, you must be knowledgeable about the market, how to invest, but you need to invest in yourself before you start looking at these. And that's why I came up with the term self-investment. I think there's a lot of focus on getting people aware of finances, and that's great. But I want to raise the awareness of ourselves because I think a lot of us have a negative approach to money. And I spoke about this in my 2021 talk, where I spoke about the abundance principle or the abundance habit, because we tend to go through life with a scarcity mentality. So I'm sure you know what this picture looks like. You, you probably know how this feels the end of the month. And a lot of people I speak to say, oh, I can't invest. I don't have money to invest. And they show me their empty wallet. Yes, that's a sign that there's not, not much that you can see there because there's no money. So how do you invest if you don't have any money to invest? This is where I want to turn things a little bit on the head. Benjamin Franklin said, time is money. The naysayers will say, Paul, but we still need money. Yes, I'm not arguing that we don't need money, but our most important commodity 
is time. Because without time, you can't make money. So what are we doing with our time? So a lot of people say, oh, I don't have anything. Look at my wallet. It's empty. I, don't, I can't invest in property. Yeah, that might be true. But we all have something. We all have time. And how much time do we have? Well, we all have 24 hours. The wealthiest people in the world have 24 hours. The poorest people in the world have 24 hours. Those who have nothing to invest have 24 hours. Do you know that it's 1,444 minutes? If we do some maths again, multiplied by 60, 86,400 seconds. And these are seconds you can never get back. Once that's gone, it's gone. So everything that you're doing, back to my question, are you investing wisely? So let's have a look. Let's break down your day into bits and pieces. It's 24 hours long. You sleep generally for eight hours. I must admit, I started sleeping eight hours much, you know, much later in life, but I think it would have helped me if I'd done that earlier. And I know when I've got too little sleep, the day really turns out quite badly because I make silly mistakes. But let's round it off into three segments. One segment, eight hours for sleep, 480 minutes. The next segment is eight hours of work. Now, this ratio sometimes changes. I meet people who are working 12 hours a day. Or if you're in a shift environment, most certainly 12 hours a day. Some people work much longer than that. But generally, as I say, for this calculation, let's work in segments of eight hours. So that is 16 hours. The last one is your free time. You have eight hours of free time to do whatever you want. This is what you can almost call discretionary time. That is what you have available to invest. However, if you go into detail, you notice that that free time is not full eight hours that you can invest. Why? Well, let's break it down. First of all, we have to eat. So you look at how much time you spend eating, and I'm assuming you're eating three times a day, at the minimum, half an hour a meal. I would encourage a little bit more than that, especially with your family. You want to at least be building relationships with them. But let's subtract 90 minutes from the total of 480, which leaves you with 390 minutes. Now we subtract exercise or playtime. Perhaps you've got some children. 60 minutes for playtime. This is now every day, every 24 hours. Now 330 is left. Still a positive total. But maybe you have to travel to and from work. Your work are not going to be really that generous if they say, well, include your travel time in the work. So you're going to have to travel. That leaves you with 270. Very, very important one. Family time, 120 minutes. Now our total has reduced to a total of 150 minutes. Chores, we've all got to take out the trash. We've all got to perhaps uh, pack your study or pack a few things or little things around the house. Perhaps there's a little bit of gardening that you like doing. It might not be a chore, but still, let's take off 60 minutes per day for chores. Odds and ends that you have to do to make sure that your house is livable. So the sum total from 480 minutes available to invest is only 90 minutes. So that is literally uh, one hour and a half that you have available. Now, you could say, Paul, I've got someone else who could do the chores for me. I'm not too sure how you'd outsource family time. Uh, travel, you could probably outsource by getting Uber or something like that. Travel with a hard train, a hard train, we can do that. And you can use that time. But I want you to play around with these ratios. But the important thing is, look at how much time, discretionary time, available time, free time you have available. That's your self-besting time. So perhaps... You can use that to do things like looking at the market where you want to invest. But the point is, what are you doing with that time? 90 minutes. So what percentage is that of the total minutes that you have in a day? 6.25. So almost 93.75% of our time is spent sleeping, working, and doing odd jobs around the house, eating, and living. Now, that doesn't sound like much if you think of investment. If you can only save 6.25%, that's probably half of a retirement. 
well, sorry, that's half of a retirement annuity that you would pay as an employee or an employer. When I was employed in the corporate environment, I contributed 7.5 and they contributed 7.5. So you can see there's a minuscule amount available. So we gotta be very careful with that amount that we have, the amount of time that we have. And with that 6.25%, those 90 minutes, there are all sorts of choices. I'm sure you've seen a few things like this. There's Netflix, there's Disney Plus, there's Prime Video, there's DSTV. This is just on the video entertainment side. How about some gaming, a couple of gamers out there? This is all part of your available time that you're using to do something else. And now that COVID is finished, we've also got the real-time game. So there's traveling and you're going to see these games. What's happening there? That's all part of your 90 minutes per day spent watching sport. So you can see there's a lot competing for your discretionary money, or we said time is money, competing for that amount of time. So let's have a look at the concept of self-vestment and what I'm proposing to you as an action step going forward in the time that you have. Remember, the average age of citizens are increasing, but the longer we live, the more money we need to live. So it's a bit of a you know chicken and egg scenario because the more we look after ourselves, the longer we live. But the longer we live, the more money we have. The more money we sorry, not we have, the more money we need. So we have to have money so that we can live a lot longer. Let's have a look at the 24 hour day. There I've graphically put it out in a little donuts graph, sleep, free time, and work. And that blue area is what I've been talking about, is the time available for our investment, our discretionary time. So let me ask you a question. Is this what your day looks like? And I've taken, you know, from you know, 12 o'clock at night, and we worked our way forward. Come six o'clock, you're still, you know, waking up. I'm a five o'clock waker, some people a little bit earlier, some people a little bit later. Then we have the gray area, and I didn't purposely put it in gray. You know, work should be fun as well. But anyway, there's the gray area, which starts around about eight, and maybe goes to four. That's, you know, you know eight-hour day, right? And then we have our free time, our discretionary time. And you'll see it stops at nine o'clock there, but now it continues all the way to the end of the day. Then we've completed 24 hours. So let's just step this back a little bit. So that was sleep time. Now this is, this little section over here is the only section we have available to us to self-vest or self-vesting time. And of course, this cycle just keeps repeating. So each day we repeat the cycle. That's very interesting. My presentation has decided to reboot. So just give me a second as it just goes through. Let's go and share that again. My apologies for that. So the cycle repeats, and that's where the repeat comes from. Yellow is the only time we have that we can invest. So if we look at this option, what are we going to do with this self-vestment time, the budget of 90 minutes? What options do we have? Well, I'm going to list a, a table a little bit later on, but you have a choice. What will you spend this time on? And that's my education. That's the aha moment that I want you to walk away with and say, what are you doing with your time? What is the best return? And you see, I'm using monetary terms especially. Now, what is the return or the return on investment that you have in terms of the time that you're spending? Because remember we said earlier, Benjamin Franklin said, time is money. And many people say, I don't have money to invest. You might not have money to invest, but you've got time. And that's why I want to encourage you. What are you doing with your time? So are you looking at series and you're streaming them endlessly, you know, episode after episode, series after series? And there you can see in option one, I've got 50 minutes out of that 90 minutes for that. So maybe that's an hour a day, a little bit less 
and then her adverts and streaming environment, not yet. There's 15 minutes for reading. There's 10 minutes for meditating. Um, depends on what your, what your spiritual beliefs are, or maybe just you time, some quiet time, and then 15 minutes for studying. Total, 90 minutes. So that's one of the options we have there. Yeah, are you spending it reading or meditating or studying? What happens with option two? Well, here we, we've, we've been a little bit more disciplined. We've reduced the amount of time that we are spending on watching TV. And remember, I said, including sport. You can sit in front of the TV for probably four hours a night and forget about all the other things that you have to do, going into your sleep time and so on. But remember, you have to do your own audit. So in this case, option two, now we've dropped our series down to 30. We're still doing the same amount of reading of 15 minutes a day. And 15 minutes will give you perhaps about you know, five or six pages. And if you add that up, yes, you can read a couple of books. Meditating has increased a little bit there. Studying has now increased. Still 90 minutes. Well, at least change it. Your budget is still 90 minutes. There's a third option. Cut TV out. Spend 30 minutes reading, 15 minutes meditating, and maybe 45 minutes study. Now, not all of us are studying, and I'll show you a couple of options there, but let's look at the different options that you have. And remember, we're all unique. We've recently had the comrades in South Africa. Some people are comrades runners. Some people do a lot of training. Other people don't. Which option is best? Well, you've got to choose because you are unique. But I just want to give you at this point a reality check. This is what happens if you're not studying and you're not plowing back into your own life. A grade 12, or in South Africa, we talk about a matric student. If you have a grade 12 qualification, you will be able to double your income of an incomplete high school career person. So someone who left school, the age of maybe uh, 15 or 14, you'll be able to earn double just because you have matric. But of course, there's no guarantee for work. So there's a lot of focus on creating entrepreneurial environments, but also remember, 75% currently, and we're sitting now in 2022, 75% of the youth are unemployed. So now add tertiary education to that. Well, now the earning potential jumps 67%. So 67% more than a matriculant. Get a degree, 330%. Now that probably gives you know, a reason for why people are completing degrees. But once again, we have a high unemployment rate because even those who have finished their qualifications form part of the youth. And I think at last count, we were just under a million people with qualifying degrees that cannot get work. But this is really for illustrative purposes to show you what the earning potential, how it changes and what you could earn over a period of time as you are increasing your knowledge. And here's a graph which actually shows the amounts. And I, what I've done is I couldn't find the latest graph, but I took the 2017 one and extrapolated that and projected that forward to where we are at the moment. So with no schooling, the gross monthly income probably ends, can you know, start at about 2,165. Now, that's a little bit less than the minimum wage. You're probably right. You know, it's pretty close to that. So. If you don't have any schooling, you don't have any qualifications, well, you can't earn too much. Some primary school, yeah, a little goes up a little bit by about, you know, just under 240, 260 rand. Completed primary school, a little bit more, but you can see the leverage starts coming in as you complete higher subjects. Grade 12, 6,000. Now, this is never guaranteed because there's always a negotiation, but I just want to show you once again for illustrative purposes what a qualification does for you. But I know you're now saying to me, but Paul, I don't have money to study. That's how I want to show you how we can self rest. So grade 12, 6,000, look what happens when you have a bachelor's degree. You can pretty much multiply that total by four. So it's four times. And you look at this, the, the amounts that I mentioned in the previous slide, how it goes up almost exponentially, the more qualifications you have. Yes, there's a limit. But the more you know, the more value you can add to an organization. I must say, that's if you can get a job. So we have been, we're seeing a lot of people being creative in creating their own jobs because there are no jobs. But once again, you need skills to do that. Where are you going to get those skills from? So when I talk about self-basement, I'm talking about massive open online courses. 
We talk about MOOCs. They've been around for a couple of years. And here are 10 examples of where you can do this. And most of these guys have free content. But you have to decide, what am I going to do with that budget that I have, the 90 minutes that I have available to go and invest? And there are all sorts of courses available, some of them offered by very prestigious universities. Some of them to charge as well, but you're welcome to do a lot of those courses free of charge. So take a note of some of those. I love Coursera, edX, and of course the Khan Academy is well known for their mathematics. Udacity is another nice one. So these are all platforms which provide some form of training which can help you invest in yourself, or as I said, to sell best. Are they free? Yes, but also not quite. Because there's no such thing as a free lunch. You're going to have to dedicate your time, your 90 minutes, your 45 minutes, your 30, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, three minutes, whatever. So it's free, but it's not quite because you are going to have to give something up. And that is the economic principle of supply and demand. You're going to have to make some form of sacrifice to be able to do these. We mentioned earlier, time is money. So let's consider that option three that I mentioned over there, where we're not watching any series on TV every night. Maybe the weekend's a little bit different, but you can look at the calculation. But I cannot do your calculation for you. You've got to do your own. But let's assume option three. 45 minutes available today times 260 weeks in the year. You'll see that I've given you some time off. I've given you the weekends off there gives you 11,700 minutes, which is equivalent to 195 hours. Ladies and gentlemen, 195 hours to invest in yourself. Isn't that exciting? That is money. It might not be cash, but it is a commodity. It is something that you can trade because if you can instill the information here, no one can take that information out. You can now trade with it. You can bargain better, you could offer value to people. And you could read 20 books. Now, 195 hours is the minimum that I'm suggesting. There are all sorts of options that you can do in terms of how we can play with the numbers. But if we wanted to study formally, and let's say there's a national qualifications framework level five, here the requirement is for 120 credits. Now, one credit is equal to 10 hours. So for, to complete this course, you need 1,200 hours. So it could take you a couple of years if you, if you only worked on your 45 minutes study per day. But ideally, you could complete this in about 10 months. National Qualification Framework Level 6 is 240 to 360 credits. Can you now see 2,400 to 3,600 hours? So pretty much... 24 months. And that's where we get the totals for diplomas and degrees, how long it takes you, because you've got to add up the total going forward. Now, there are people that study for much longer periods. Full time, you would do it much shorter, but part time, it will obviously take you a little bit longer. So we're assuming that both of these are in full time environments. Part time, we end up with a scenario of 195 minutes. So as I bring this to a close, I just want to recap. We know that time is the commodity or it's, it's the unit that enables you to make money. Some people charge a lot of money per hour and the people that are skilled can do that. Take a surgeon, take a professional sports person, take a professional counselor, a professional software programmer, a professional photographer. So time is money. We need to understand that. And even if you don't have money, you still have time, 24 hours of time. I don't have more than you. You don't have more than me. The wealthiest people in the world, people like Warren Buffett, Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, Bill Gates, have no more or no less time than us. They might plan their day a little bit better. And yes, money does give you freedom to do certain things. But the only way you're going to get that freedom is to be able to invest in yourself so that you can start to make the right choices to get money and then start investing that money. So the bottom line is we have a choice. What are you going to do with that? Are you going to sell vest or 
staying with a V theme, veg on the couch as a couch potato. And you can watch streaming series hour after hour, minute after minute. The question is what value is it adding to you? Are you investing in yourself or are you just vegging? Don't forget the massive open online courses. These are available. There's so many of them. Yes, they will require access to the internet. But ladies and gentlemen, there are also places around which provide free Wi-Fi, especially some of the local municipalities at libraries provide free Wi-Fi. And you can go to these places, get the Wi-Fi. Then a lot of you are saying, but Paul, I don't have a smartphone. We can, there's always something that comes up. Once again, you can trade your time to perhaps earn a smartphone. And the price of them is also coming down. There are a lot of people that would talk against this concept, but ladies and gentlemen, all I want to do is raise your awareness of what we do when we are creating time to invest in ourselves. So you could choose option one, 15 minutes study per day, or option three, 45 minutes. If you rearrange your budget and see what else, where you can trim a little bit off, maybe you don't need eight hours of sleep. I've taken three bundles of eight hours each, you could only sleep seven hours. That releases another 60 minutes into your formula. And now, instead of having only 90 minutes, you now have two and a half hours. But that's up to you. That's the uniqueness of this. So what is the call to action? Well, I want you to map out your day. I want you to know what's happening each hour of the day. Can you account for that? Because once again, this is like you know, accounting in an organization, they are looking at the money, they're accounting or accounting for what has been spent, what has come in. You need to account for what you're doing in your life. Use apps, there's some the wonderful apps. There's a, lo a lovely app called Freedom, which helps you switch out those things that are stealing your time so that you can focus. If you look at the little video at the bottom, they're going through there, where is your time going? Where is that time being used? Then, of course, set up an action plan. Why do you want to do this? What are you going to do? When are you going to do this? Where are you going to do this? And with who? Because accountability is very, very important when it comes to finances, when it comes to your own time. Start today. There's no better time than the present to do this. And I'm sure you might have heard the term, you know, when is the best time to plant a tree? Well, probably 30 years ago, because if you want to sit under the shade, you have to be you know, under a tree that has grown for the last 30 years. But when is the next best time? It's now. So don't lose another of your 86,400 seconds that you have each day. Your time is running out. So we think back to that story that uh, I, I learned from Stephen Covey when he was talking about people, you know, sharpening the sword. It's one of his principles in his book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. If we're not sharpening our saw or sharpening our axe, we're going to go into the forest and we're perhaps going to be chopping away for hours, like the young guy. We've got to look at the equipment. And who is the equipment? We are the equipment. You sharpen yourself. If you look after that axe head, like the one on the right, yes, it is a newer one, but the one on the left looks like it needs a little bit of TLC there. If you look after that, keep sharpening it, making sure that you're oiling it so it's not rusty. You are the equipment. You've got to stay sharp so that you can do what you need to do. Then which one are you? Are you the wise person or the young person that didn't take a break, that never sharpened their axe? And we saw the old person with more experience, more wisdom, who took a break when he was tired, who slept enough, sharpened his axe, was able to chop down many more trees than the younger guy on the right. So I trust this has been valuable to you. Remember, we have the ability to invest in ourselves. We don't always need money to do that. And I'm passionate about this because, you know, I have so many people that say, but I don't have money. I don't have the opportunity. I was told once that when you don't have the resources, be resourceful. So today's session was a little bit about being resourceful, and I'll give you an opportunity now for some questions, and we can continue the conversation. If you want to connect with me, here are some of my social media links, 
an email address. And if you enjoyed this talk, you know, tweet about it, go to Instagram, look up the Money Smart Week South Africa 2022, use the hashtag, use their, their, um, their tags so you can tag them. And let's, let's have a conversation. Let's, let's look at how we can make a difference in our own lives so that we can earn more, so we can impact other people's lives. Thank you so much for your time. And let's, let's go over to any questions. I'm not too sure whether there are any questions in the house. Let's see, you're welcome to raise your hands and let's take a couple of questions. And if there are no questions, then we'll just end. So let's see. I'll leave a few more minutes. I've booked this time for 45 minutes, so we do have at least 10 minutes left. But if this was valuable for you, please let others know. I have recorded the session and it will go up onto my YouTube channel. And you're welcome to have a look and see you know, what other people are doing. And please have a look at the Money Smart website. There are all sorts of opportunities where you can get involved and learn free of charge. We, we don't charge for these. We do it out of our I'll get a gift of giving back to the community to make a difference. And I'd love to see each of you going ahead and making a difference wherever you are. So it looks like there are no questions. That's good. That meant I was able to communicate well with you guys. Let's just see if there are any chats. No, that's good. No question and answers. Oh, there's one question. How do you overcome tiredness, especially once you've entered your free time? Oh. All right, Cabello, great question. How do we overcome tiredness? Well, I often say that we get tired when we're doing things that we don't enjoy. So this speaks a little bit to making sure that you're operating in an environment where you are strong. So if we understand that we love working with people, you will be less tired than people working with, with other people. So the first thing for me when I left the corporate environment is I discovered that I needed to sleep more. And I mean, it's probably not answering your question fully over there, but make sure that you are getting enough rest so that by the time you need to do what you need to do, you are well rested. So it's a case of really allocating your time to those aspects of life that you really enjoy and finding a way to get someone else to do those aspects that you don't enjoy. And this is where we can work together with people. And there are all sorts of creative ways of, you know, almost job shadowing and helping people and, and have people work for a commission basis, doing the hard stuff that you don't like doing. And they may love it. You know, they may love connecting with people. You hate it. But if that makes you tired, steer clear. I hope that answers your question. Uh, great question. Thanks. Thanks, Cabello. Any other questions? As mentioned earlier, you're welcome to, to link up with me on any one of the other platforms over there. There are my details again. Please uh, look me up, uh, tweet me, and then just send me a question. It will be great to connect with you. Uh, and then we can continue the conversation. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if that is it, I'm not going to uh, waste your time any further. Please look around. There are a lot of these talks happening live as well. I decided to do this one virtually because a lot of people are battling to travel now. And uh, once again, time is one of the challenges that I've faced going forward is how do I move to a, a physical environment and you know, score the two hours that I was saving, driving an hour there and an hour back. So it's quite difficult. That's why I prefer, I prefer a virtual environment. It's not as friendly and as, as sort of nice and touchy and feely as a face-to-face -face one. But have a look on the, on the program. There are other sessions like this that are run face-to-face -face all around South Africa in the next couple of days. We're only in day three, so we still got Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So please connect on those platforms. So thank you very much for your time today. And you've got five minutes discount. Go and use those five minutes creatively in an environment where you can add value, and where you can grow, and you can invest in yourself. Thank you so much for attending today. And 